So when you first get your oscilloscope, testing injectors is probably one of the first measurements you want to make. But what do all those squiggly lines mean and what can we take from it? On there, and I'm just going to short out the injector with a, with a high resistance resistor. In this video we're going to look at the power and ground voltage signals that we get on the oscilloscope with an injector and analyse it to see how we can use it for diagnosis. So by simply measuring the voltage and current on the injector circuit there's quite a few things that we can tell. So we can check that the electrical circuit's all okay. We can also check whether the injector itself is all right, whether there's a problem with the injector and we can also look at whether there is any mechanical movement inside the injector. Make sure you go and check out the second part of this video where we'll look at the current draw of the circuit. In this video we're going to look at voltage signals. So subscribe if you don't want to miss it. So I remembered when I first started using an oscilloscope and found it quite straightforward to get uh, simple waveforms up on the screen but I didn't actually really understand what I was looking at. So hopefully this video will help in analysing some of those waveforms. So first of all the basic circuit of your kind of generic port injection injectors. So they're the injectors that are fitted in directly into the intake manifold. Generally they all share a common power supply and that's usually fed from a relay somewhere and there may be a fuse in there. On this car we don't have that, we just have a common power supply that's spliced from a main relay power supply. And if you don't know how to work out which wires to test then if you look at all the injectors generally one of the wires will be the same colour on every injector. You can pretty much guarantee that will be your power supply. So if we look at testing the power supply first, so what we should have is a constant battery power supply all of the time. Let's have a look. What I've done here is I've connected the black lead up to the ground of the battery and then the red lead up to the power supply side of the injector. Let's start the engine and see what we get. Okay so we've started the engine and we can see on the screen now that we've got around 14 volts so that's, that's good for us. And if you want to identify any problems what you need to do is, is use a trigger. So if we've got a voltage drop issue, so uh, resistance on the power supply, when the injector's turned on that voltage will drop below the battery voltage we've got there. So if you use the trigger function go to auto okay so we're picking up some interference there increase the time to about 20 milliseconds per division okay so we can see there that we've got a pretty flat line we've got no dropouts which might match up with when the injectors turned on and actually to properly test the power supply on an injector you really do need an oscilloscope if you just checked it with your voltmeter then all you're reading is the voltage there with no load on the circuit. With an oscilloscope that's much faster you can see that short period of time when the injector's turned on and measure that voltage drop. So let's have a look at the switch side now. So all we've done on the switch side is connected to the ground of the battery. Uh, we're probing the other side of the injector, so the grounded side. It's the side that will connect to the engine control unit. Because we're going to have a bit of a spike on this voltage, it's, it's going to create a, a quite a high spike. We're protecting this oscilloscope with an attenuator. So the maximum input voltage of this oscilloscope is only 20 volts. So we've put a 20 to 1 attenuator on it, which will help it go up to 400 volts if we need it. So let's turn on channel B and I'm going to put the probe as times 20 because we've got the 20 to 1 attenuator on there and I'm going to start with 100 volts. I'm going to change the trigger to channel B now. We're going to move that trigger down. I think we just saw it there. There we are. Okay so quite squashed up at the minute so I'm going to reduce the time to pull that pattern out a bit. Okay, that's a bit better. Um, we're going over range a bit, we've got channel over range, so we're going a bit over 100 volts. So I'm going to go up to 200 volt divisions. Okay, so I've selected 200 volts, so we're not getting that channel over range message. I've moved it down a bit, so we can see we've got our waveform now. We've still got our power supply here, okay. And between here 
and here is where the injector switched on. Going back to our power supply test, if you notice that the voltage dropped in that section there between those markers, you've got a resistance problem on the circuit. But we haven't got that, so we're, we're all good now. Okay, so what can we tell from this waveform? We can tell that we've got a power supply. So when the injector switched off, we should me measure 12 volts or battery voltage. And here we've got 13 volts, so that's good. Then the engine ECU turns on the injector and it drops down to zero. So that should be going right down to zero. We can see there that we are pretty much going down all the way to zero. If we zoom in a bit, you can see there we're going down to zero. We've got 500 millivolts measured on there. It's probably not so accurate because we've got the attenuator on there. But if you're not going down to zero, that means you've got a resistance problem on the ground side. Okay, so we can see here as well, we get like a large spike at 120 volts when the injector's turned off. Now, when the injector's turned on, we've got the solenoid in the injector, and that generates a magnetic field around it when it's turned on. And when we turn that in solenoid off, that magnetic field gets induced back into the solenoid and creates a voltage spike that we can measure here on the oscilloscope. So what can that spike tell us? So really you want to be comparing it to the other injectors on the same engine. And if one of the spikes is lower, it might indicate that you've got a potential issue on that circuit. For example, a short circuit or resistive fault. So we should be able to simulate a problem there. And I'm just gonna short out the injector with a, with a high resistance resistor. Okay, so you see there when I connect it up, the spike drops, disconnected, connect the resistor, there we are, the spike drops. So you want to be comparing those to the other injectors on the engine. So something else we can actually see on here is mechanical movement. Now it's a little bit difficult to see on this uh, injector pattern here, which is one of the downfalls of these low spec oscilloscopes. They are really, really good, um, but there's some times where you might not get the detail that you're quite after, but there are some settings that you can play with to actually increase the resolution of the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to this box here, increase the scale by two. You can see now we've got a bigger pattern on there, but it's a little bit grainy. So if we go down to here and increase the resolution, so resolution enhancement, we're going to go to nine and then we're going to reduce the time a bit more to two milliseconds. So what we're looking at is where this spike goes up and then drops, we can actually see this little hump here. Okay, now that is actual movement inside the injector. And if that hump isn't there, it might indicate that there is some sort of mechanical blockage in the injector. Okay, so there we go, some great analysis there on petrol injectors for you. Now what you need to do is make sure you keep your oscilloscope handy and use it. It's probably the main reason that people don't get the oscilloscope out, because they just can't be bothered to set it up. However, if it's already there, ready to go, you're more likely just to connect it up, take a measurement, and that way you'll get much better at reading waveforms.